Over the years, we have seen game companies provide all kinds of silly justifications for the implementation of loot boxes in their games. The likes of EA and Activision Blizzard in particular have spouted so much utter nonsense and bullshit to defend their gold mine, with player choice in particular being the most popular of excuses. They make it out to be as if monetization schemes and games are to our benefit, as if they were implemented for our sake, rather than for the sake of filling their own pockets with all the money in the world. Now, among the major game companies, many will probably argue that Ubisoft is the lesser of evils in terms of how they go about implementing microtransactions, but they are also far from innocent. Many will recall that Ubisoft at one point assured there wouldn't be any microtransactions in the division before breaking that promise. And once games like Rainbow Six Siege began to pick up steam, Ubisoft began to retroactively readjust their business model to maximize monetization to the dismay of players. Most recently, Assassin's Creed Odyssey locked its XP booster, which could have easily been a gameplay toggle rather than a $10 gameplay feature behind a paywall, giving those who prefer the pace that the boosted XP gain offered no choice but to shell out additional cash for something very trivial. It was also only early this year that Ubisoft discussed how the company intends to gradually shift from focusing on making games to making live services, which isn't at all reassuring when it comes to perception surrounding the future of the company. It's obviously a smart business move, but there are concerns among gamers about what this will all ultimately do to the quality of their products, as we have seen games suffer from this stuff time and again. Now, I'd like nothing more than to be able to assure you that things will get better in the long run, but a recent statement from a Ubisoft representative has only served to further ignite concerns that the publisher's priorities are woefully misaligned with their core consumers. The following information comes from a statement posted on Steam by Ubisoft representative Yubi Warlock, who responded to inquiries regarding loot boxes being discovered in the 2.5D motorcycles game Trials Rising, which as you can imagine stirred up certain crowds. It didn't help matters that everything about Yubi Warlock's response was the last thing anyone opposed to any kind of loot box implementation wanted to hear. Here's what he had to say. Hey, as has been pointed out, these loot crates are purely cosmetic. I do appreciate why players feel the way they do about them, not a huge fan myself. However, as it was also pointed out, you can always just not buy them. Ultimately, they're intended for players who want something to help them stand out from the crowd when playing online, or even just those who are big fans of the game and want to support us further. Yes, it means that some players end up spending more on our games than others, and that does result in increased profit it's for us. It also helps us to put more money into new titles and to understand what players look for in their games. If players simply didn't buy these crates, they would not be added into games in future. All in all, loot crates, cosmetic items in general, have been a huge boon for the gaming industry, being a driving factor in the increased popularity of gaming over the past decade or so. They aren't a bad thing if done right. Your feedback on the topic is still very much appreciated as this is a hotly debated topic. I I do hope you consider the impact it would actually have on your enjoyment of the game though, Ubisoft support. Oh fucking hell, where do I even begin? I guess I'll just go paragraph by paragraph and explain what my qualms are with this response. The first paragraph highlights that this game's loot boxes are purely cosmetic, and that players can always choose not to buy them. Loot box rewards being cosmetic only definitely helps, but cosmetic or not, rewards are rewards no matter how you put it, and cosmetics can very much affect one's enjoyment of a game, especially in an online game where part of the appeal is showing off by looking dope as hell or by expressing your own personality through your custom character design. Sure, that stuff doesn't statistically affect how you perform in a game, but to say that's not part of the overall gameplay experience is folly. There's a reason why so many people were pissed at the way Destiny 2 handled monetization during its launch months, despite them mainly being tied to cosmetics. And same thing goes with what is currently going on with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. They ultimately come down to not properly rewarding players for playing the game, focusing instead on rewarding those who spend a little extra cash. Destiny 2 was never pay to win by any means, but its overall experience was certainly marred by its purposely lackluster and throttled reward system. So you can point out that microtransactions in a game are cosmetics only, but it doesn't automatically justify the way it's implemented, especially when the scheme of choice is loot boxes, the glorified gambling slot machines that we all know and hate. 
I for one don't find any form of a system in which you pay for the random chance to obtain a desired reward, in which you don't actually know what you're paying for, to be acceptable. Moving on, Yubi Warlock highlights in the second paragraph how the cosmetics are ultimately intended for players who want to stand out from the crowd when playing online, or people who just want to support the game further. Yeah, well, guess what, dude? There are tons of people who like to stand out from the crowd when playing a game online. He's acting as if this were a very specific crowd, and while there are people out there who may not care all that much about cosmetics, there are certainly plenty of other dedicated players who, when given the chance, will strive to make their avatars look as badass as possible, and that will give them some sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. So to think it's acceptable to compromise such a fulfilling element of an online game so that only those who pay benefit most from it simply shows once again how out of touch game publishers like Ubisoft are nowadays, many of them willfully. From there, in paragraph 3, Ubi Warlock admits that loot boxes do indeed yield profits with some players spending more than others, while saying that this all helps them put money into new titles and to understand what players look for in their games. Ah yes, the same old excuse game publishers like to use, which essentially bogs down to we need predatory loot boxes to help afford our operations and our games. That's complete bullshit and they know it. Loot boxes are simply the cheapest and easiest way to earn lucrative revenue in the gaming industry. I don't doubt for a second that the billions earned by game companies from nickel and diming players yield a huge surplus, much of which goes into the pockets of executives and doesn't go into giving ground floor developers and workers pay raises or into furthering game development. Most of that money earned from recurrent monetization doesn't go into the art of making games, it goes into corporate growth and expansion of financial prospects. I mean, just look at the half step of an upgrade that FIFA 19 is from FIFA 18, and tell me with a straight face that it absolutely needs to make billions from Ultimate Team card packs to help with these kinds of half-assed and half-baked annual releases and upgrades. Don't get me wrong, I'm well aware that AAA games are all major financial investments, but not to the point where game companies can justify rampant, shady monetization by alleging that games cost too much to make. You've also got to love the bit about how loot box profits are also used to understand what players look for in their games. It's very simple, we look for a good time, and schemes like loot boxes are 100% counterintuitive to that end. The richest part of all, though, is how he says that if players simply didn't buy these crates, they would not be added into games in the future. Yeah, well, if players simply didn't buy meth, meth wouldn't get made, but that doesn't make meth a good thing for society now, does it? It doesn't help matters that the bulk of the profits earned from recurrent monetization comes from a select few people who can afford or are addicted enough to shell out hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands on a single game. There are studies out there that show that only a small percentage of people make up for the bulk of revenue generated from microtransactions in platforms like mobile games. And you can bet your ass that the same applies for AAA releases. So to counter Yubi Warlock's point, most players either dabble in it a little or straight up don't buy microtransactions, and yet the majority of us are made to endure their detrimental effects because a few select whales are making companies heaps of cash. Companies literally have a very small percentage of the player base, those with the heaviest pockets, dictate the business model and quality of their games. So yeah, point the finger at all of us gamers, why don't you? Rather than evaluating yourselves and the fact that you value a select few customers more than the majority who'd like to see shit like this gone from our games. Next up is the fourth paragraph, during which Yubi Warlock talks about what a boon loot boxes have been for the gaming industry and how they have driven increased popularity in gaming. Indeed, they've been a financial boon for the gaming industry, but the caveat is that the games themselves are generally given less care by publishers. For hardcore gamers, seeing how companies like EA, Activision Blizzard, Take-Two, and Ubisoft have twisted their products has been nothing short of a whimper for the medium. And no, gaming's popularity did not increase because of the existence of microtransactions. Gaming's popularity gained a huge boost off of the back of creatively conceived and well-executed titles, 
What made Fortnite such an explosive success wasn't the implementation of monetization, it was primarily the fact that it was both fun to play and visually appealing for millions. And Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't sell 17 million copies in two weeks because of microtransactions, there's none of that there. It sold that many copies because it was a highly anticipated sequel that delivered unparalleled fidelity, attention to detail, and storytelling prowess. Games are popular because good games elevated the medium, not because executives decided to exploit the medium to rake in all the money in the world. The Ubisoft rep then says what game publishers like to say to downplay the issue of paid randomized rewards. They aren't a bad thing if done right. Yeah, well, I'd believe you if just about every game I've encountered featuring loot boxes didn't on some level suffer for it. There isn't a single game that wouldn't be better off with having rewards tied to gameplay progression rather than glorified slot machines. That's how games used to be until publishers realized they could, little by little, strip what should be inherent elements of games and then sell them separately as gambling rewards. The only way loot boxes could ever be done right, quote unquote, would be if they were properly regulated with the appropriate age restrictions and some much needed oversight. But the gaming industry has adamantly lobbied against that, hasn't it? And even then, their implementation is simply not ideal, because again, every time they are there, they just take something away from the game. Finally, the Ubisoft representative concluded by expressing his appreciation for feedback that clearly went ignored, before asking the concerned player to consider the impact loot boxes would actually have on their enjoyment of the game, essentially insinuating that customers are blowing things way out of proportion with this stuff. Well, here's the thing, Ubisoft, after the shit two years we have had with loot boxes in our games, trust us when we say that we have very thoroughly considered the impact they have had on our enjoyment of games, and we have spoken out time and again all throughout. So if all that outcry hasn't been enough to get it through your thick heads, that this shit mars the integrity of games, and that we have had enough of this shit, then be prepared to face further ire from an increasingly disillusioned gaming community. If you want to keep spouting bullshit after everything that's happened, and all the shitstorm companies like yourselves have wrought through decisions like adding loot boxes to a beloved game series, or spouting dismissive nonsense as a response, as a meager attempt to mitigate backlash, be prepared for more noise and for the continued acceleration of encroaching government regulations. I mean, you look at a statement like this and people wonder why gamers seem so pissed all the time as of late, or why there's such a support for government intervention. Well, it's because of statements like these that demonstrate how little fucks corporate heads give about our products as long as they can use them to swindle us to appease their investors' unquenchable thirst for indefinite financial growth. This utter disgrace of a response right here perfectly encapsulates what's wrong with the gaming industry right now. They are fully aware of our qualms, but they'll try to spin everything in such a way to fit a narrative that will ultimately drive revenue, whether it be by downplaying issues or by pointing the finger directly at gamers. Ubisoft may be the lesser of evils, but the publisher continues to scheme all right, across all their franchises, big or small, and responses like this are a clear indication that they have no intention to stop pursuing plans to change course from being game makers to being makers of money-milking live services. These are one man's perspective anyway, I'd love to hear what your take is on Ubisoft's latest statements in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.